Hello everyone, it's your buddy Sven here once again, coming at you with another Hearthstone video. Now today I'm still going to be discussing the Grand Tournament since it's still relatively new, but I'm going to be discussing, whereas I discussed yesterday, the best cards in the set. Uh, I'm going to be discussing the worst cards in the set for each class, and in my opinion, the worst neutral in the game. In, uh, not in the game, but the worst neutral coming out of this set. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. Now in my opinion, Mulch isn't quite the best card for druids just because yes you get the three mana to pop a minion but you add a random minion to your opponent's hand now this definitely has a really good possibility of giving them something that may not be great but it could also give them something that could completely change the game this can go very very wrong for you and overall i just don't see mulch being great especially when druids have another really low mana destroy an enemy minion and naturalize i think this card's worse than naturalize so overall that's why i'm giving mulch overall the worst druid card in tgt <clears throat> next up would be king's elect for hunters elec elec uh whatever you want to call it but it's a 232 battle cry reveal a minion in each deck if yours costs more draw it yes but this, that's really good because you get to draw. However, the problem is, if you play King's Alec, odds are you're playing it in something that might be a little bit joust heavy. And if you're focusing on this jousting element, removing a high drop out of your deck for jousting purposes is really bad. Say, for example, you're playing a Frost Giant in your deck, and you joust this guy, and your opponent pulls a 3, and you pull your Frost Giant. That's really cool. You won the joust. However, that 10 gets removed from the jousting pool. That's not really good for future jousts. You want that 10 in there for as long as you keep your jousting effects. Overall, I just don't see that card really really making things great. Because most of the cards that you want to draw and have in your hand are going to lose a joust in Hunter. Now, Mage it was very difficult for me just because, let's face it, they didn't get a lot of bad support. All their stuff sees, seems really, really good. I gushed over Flame Lance. Ronin I gushed over in uh, my Legendary Discussion video. Now, I'd have to say Koldara Drake might be it, just because, yes, you could use your Hero Power any number of times, but this is implying, okay, so basically the best way to get use of Koldara Drake would be to have Fallen Hero, Koldara Drake, and Lady of the Lake all out, which you can't do in one turn without multiple Thoris and Prox, and there's no real way that mages increase their mana, because even if you were to coin that turn, you can't do it. So... Overall, <clears throat> I think this card got really hyped in the fact that you could use your hero power any number of times, but I just don't see that becoming overly useful, because keep in mind, in most situations, you're going to have to pop two mana for each hero power use anyway. Unless your opponent has a field of very low health minions, this card won't really come in handy, as many people think it will. Now for Paladins, I have to say Argent Lance... Despite the fact that, my pal in my opinion, Paladin's got, like, the shittiest end of Grand Tournament. So despite the fact that they're not, like, the top deck right now, TGT didn't give them much love. The, le the class legendary isn't very good. Overall, their support has been eh. Argent Lance is just kind of, like, the biggest spit in the face, though, where it's a 2-2-2. Two, 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 battle cry, you joust, and if yours costs more, you gain a durability. Congratulations, you got a 2 mana, 2 attack, 3 durability weapon. It's not really that good. It, in fact, the matter is, Paladins already have their weapon spots filled up with things like True Silver Champion and Cog Hammer. They're not going to drop that to play Argent Lance. Priests, as weird as it sounds, I'm going to have to give it to Confessor Paltris. Their class legendary... The, it, it, when people think about it, it's like, oh, hey, every single time I spend two mana on my hero power, or one with Lady of the Lake, I get a random legendary. That's really good. That's really cool if you could keep this four health minion alive. That is also vulnerable to Shadow Word Death in a Priest matchup. There's a lot of removal that can get rid of this woman. Not a lot of people seem to realize that and think, oh, she's just going to constantly spew out legendaries. No, she'll probably get one or two. Honestly, the best case scenario is playing her on something along the lines of like turn 9 or 10, so that way you get the assured legendary pop from her. I'm not saying she's horrible, I just don't think she's the best priest card. Now, for rogues, I have to give it to Undercity Valiant. Yes, the 2-3-2 makes him efficient, and his combo is deal 1 damage. He's not a bad card, but in my opinion, SI7 is just better. 
Because the fact of the matter is, one damage just serves as an execute. SI7 actually can clear out a good chunk of the minions in this game, especially by the time you're playing things like I'm um, like four or five mana. By the time you'd be playing him, you're going to be able to pop something. Undercity Valiant doesn't quite have that assurance that SI7 does. Now, Shaman, Shaman was very hard for me to pick because, in my opinion, Shaman got some really good support. So, more or less, I'm going with what kind of defied the overall theme, and that would be Charged Hammer. Charged Hammer is a 4-2-4 weapon. Death Rattle, your hero power becomes deal 2 damage. Now, I have a problem with this card because TGT really did focus in on making Totem Shaman really, really strong. In my opinion, Totem Shaman is going to be a great deck. And I look forward to building it as soon as I can. But this negates your ability to summon totems off your hero power. Because it just turns your hero power into deal 2 damage. That doesn't really help. At least for totem shaman. It might help normal shaman. But in my opinion, the totem hero power is a lot better than just dealing 2 damage. Now warlocks. Warlocks were an interesting one. Uh, they have some really good support. But in my opinion, demon fuse is just lackluster. It really, it, two mana to give a demon three three. Yes, you give him one. You give him one on each stat under power overwhelming, and he doesn't die. But you give your opponent a mana crystal. You have to be really smart when you play demon fire. And fact of the matter is, I just don't see demon views seeing any play. There are better support cards in Warlock, and the fact of the matter is, the demons are basically fine on their own. The most you could do would be like, what? You play Voidwalker turn one, then you demon fuse it, in which case you're already giving your opponent an edge in the game? I, I think that giving your opponent a Mono Crystal isn't really worth uh, its effect. Now, Warriors, Warriors were interesting. They got some good support, and they got some bad support, like you, most expansions should give. I think King's Defender is overall their worst, though. The 332 that if you have a minion with taunt, gain one durability to turn into a 333. I fact of the matter is a 333 weapon isn't strong. A 332 weapon is even worse. I don't see this giving a lot of great, you know, this isn't going to swing a game for anyone. This isn't going to even really change a game. I'd rather play Warax, honestly. I would rather play Fiery Warax. That's that's how I feel about these things. Now we have the minion and in my another neutral and in my opinion it's Argent Watchman. Argent Watchman, yes, his stats are really good for his level, you know, the two two four. He's super efficient, but he can't attack unless you pop your hero power. So basically meaning you need to spend in the event that Lady of Lake was out, you would have to spend one mana to cause him to attack, most likely two. I I don't think Argent Watchman will see any play. I just can't see that really being played because not being able to attack is going to suck the, the only advantage would be the like if playing if you played wailing soul in your deck in order to silence your entire field that'd be it you drop him then you play wailing soul but who plays wailing soul <laughs> real talk anywho this about concludes my discussion i wonder if you guys agree with me or not please leave a comment down below if you think i'm right or if you want to talk about it with me if i missed something please do let me know Anywho, um, if you want to, click that big red button down below so you'll subscribe to my channel. That'd be really, really cool of you. We're only 10 away from 100, boys. That is huge. I am so pumped for that. And if you really do want to subscribe, that would help me out so very much. Hitting my goal. My goal for September 1st was 50. And right now, we are crushing that by, you know, we're at 180% of that. So thank you guys so much for your unending support. I adore you guys with all my heart. You guys are the best fan base on YouTube. Anywho, this has been Sven. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.